Welcome to the Advance Your Art podcast, where we talk about the journey from artist to entrepreneur and everything in between. You've worked hard to hone your craft. Now take it to the next level with tips, techniques, strategies, and routines used by successful artists to grow their businesses and careers. Now, let's get started and have some fun with your host, Yuri Cataldo. Robert, welcome to the show. How are you today? Yuri, I'm very well and I'm really looking forward to speaking with you. Thank you. Wonderful. And again, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. So I'd like to start off uh, by asking you to describe yourself and what you do. Mm. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, the reason I'm laughing is that uh, I always think if anybody asks me that, they better be ready because I'll, I'll start droning on for hours. Um, <laughs> but I'll try not to. So, look, um, I work with people that are um, starting, running or growing very small businesses. Um, and I have been doing that um, for the last actually for about the last 15 or so years. So um, I won't bore you with my whole background just yet, but that's what I do. I help people sort of uh, conceive, design, create, finesse very small businesses. So I think of them as lifestyle businesses, but often when you hear the phrase lifestyle business, you know, we get all those silly images of people lying in hammocks with their laptops and that's just not realistic in my opinion. So when I think of lifestyle business, what I mean is being able to do the work they enjoy with the people they like, where they want and when they want. That to me is a, is a lifestyle business and one that successfully puts food on the table. If we can get all those things kind of sorted, then as far as I'm concerned, you know, our work life doesn't get much better than that. So that's what I do. I, I'm, I'm committed to helping people do that. It's what I've been doing for a number of years. Alongside that, you know, I'm in my, I had a, grew a big uh, community down here in Australia. So I'm in, I, I'm talking to you from Sydney. I grew a fairly large um, solo business community here, mm -hmm. um, which I actually sold just over a year ago. So now I'm, you know, early start of a new year, I find myself without that business um, and sort of really footloose and fancy free and very much solo again. And um really rather excited so i'm in, in my early 60s i'm um i'm my wife is an artist so we have sort of art all around us mm -hmm. in fact <clears throat> in fact we're going to have to start hanging it on the ceiling if um if we don't sell some um <laughs> but yeah so you know that that's that's who i am and that's what i do does that answer the question i hope so yes yes it has uh, good. actually quite succinctly so thank you oh that's good yeah <laughs> So let's so let's jump into you know because you've had such an interesting journey. Let's before we talk about you know kind of your advice to solo entrepreneurs. Mm. Let's let's look at your business career. So what first made you want to start a company? That's a great question. Well, look. So uh, I'm a uh, I've been living in Australia for a little over twenty years. Um, prior to that, I was in London. I lived in London for a little over 20 years and uh, prior to that so for the first 20 years of my life I lived in the sort of country side in the UK in England um, when I moved to London um, I was not this was in my very I think I was 20 I was basically just I just had a job and um, through that through that job through a very long story I ended up in the being drawn towards the sort of creative industries um, but very much as a suit as opposed to a creative if you do you follow that distinction is that a yes. yeah? yeah yeah that's, okay. that's a thing yeah all right. So I was kind of, um, in fact, uh, the, the work that I did before that was in the in the motor business, the auto business. So my father um, was a, a motor dealer or an auto dealer um, back where I was born. And so I kind of was in that industry. So basically, I was a used car salesman. That was the first thing I ever did. Now, I'm not sure what your first impressions of a used car salesman is, but usually you give them a fairly wide berth. Right. But um, what was good about being in that business was that I learned to deal with people. I learned to sell. I learned to recognize buying signals. I learned to understand people. 
And then when I, through various sort of twists of fate and serendipity, kind of moved more into the creative side. So in fact, what I was doing was working with um, Alfa Romeo, who are, a, a, you would probably know, a large Italian car company. I worked for their head office in London and I, I found myself, I managed to get myself into the marketing department. So I was doing kind of marketing for the automotive industry with a, you know, a fairly sexy Italian sports car. Um, I then moved from that and actually joined jump ship from the client side to the agency side and joined the agency that were looking after that piece of business. And that then really set me for the first time into this whole space of a small creative company. So we were an independent agency based in the center of London. And I then spent um, probably, I think, about 10 years working my way through that little business to the point that I became a partner in that business. And indeed, we then sold that business to Saatchi and Saatchi Advertising, you know, at that point, the world's biggest ad agency. And um, so, uh, you know, I, I really did work, work, work my way quite deeply into the this kind of creative business, and I was really enjoying it. But what I realized more and more was that the people that really seemed to be enjoying themselves um, were not the suits and not necessarily even the designers in the company, but were often the freelance people that we were working with, you know, artists. And we used to do sort of music promotions and various other things within this in this business. And I, I kept seeing these people thinking, you seem to be having a really good time. <laughs> um, and uh, but nonetheless, you know, I was still I was kind of head down building a career working far too hard i was in my sort of early 30s by then and by the time we sold that business i was pretty well burnt out to be honest you know i'd, I'd given a, a a lot of a, a lot of my um myself to that business so um i thought okay i want to do something a bit different here so i left that business and we sold it so i had a little bit of money in the bank mm -hmm. and um I actually bought a public lavatory in the west of London and I converted it into an art gallery. Uh, that might sound a bit weird and indeed it was a bit weird, but um, I just wanted, you know, I, I had developed uh, an, a real interest in contemporary art mm -hmm. and I thought, Oh, I, I thought rather arrogantly, I thought what the art world is missing is marketing. They need somebody who knows how to market. Because if you go, and I'm sure it's the same in Boston and around the world, you go into a, an art gallery and, and suddenly you get often very sort of standoffish people. And, um, you know, you can't, it's all very quiet and hushed. And I thought this is all wrong. You know, cause when you meet the artists, they're not like that at all. They're all upbeat and, exciting and creative and yet so many galleries are very sort of stuffy you know that's a that's an, an english word that i hope translates mm -hmm. so i thought as a marketing person i know what we need to do we need to rev up and excite the world of contemporary art what better place to do that than in a public lavatory so i bought this public lavatory that the councils were sort of selling them off um for very i won't go into that whole rabbit hole of, of <laughs> digression but anyway i bought this building and i filled it full of contemporary art and uh through my marketing skills i got you know, a lot of publicity i had big shows i had big openings didn't make a dollar it was a really hard business what i realized i was very good at getting people in the door mm -hmm. but the sort of work that i was showing was quite sort of in your face and i just couldn't get people to take the work home with them mm. bit of a bit of a lesson there mm -hmm. but uh, i kind of refused to um you know i didn't want to start selling pretty pictures so i basically shut that business down and, and and you know kind of learned a lesson and, and and lost quite a lot of money but there you go it's all part of growing up and i got to that point i thought okay so now what am i going to do and i decided i don't want to go back into employment i want to i really want to get control of my uh, kind of working life so i did what any sensible person does is i put a backpack on and went around the world that's what i thought i should do so i did um and uh and I ended up in Australia. You know, I went traveled in various places and I ended up here. Now, for an, uh, for an Englishman to come to Australia, 
it's a very easy transition. I mean, the um, getting permission to live here isn't so easy, but Mm -hmm. in terms of the countries, you know, it's very easy. The language is the same. They drive on the same side of the road. Uh, You know, everything's it's just like England, only with sunshine. Um, it, and, and I got here and I thought, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. And I fell in love with Australia and I loved the sort of style of life here. And I thought, this is it. I'm going to base the next phase of my life here. So I did. I moved to Australia. I happily met uh, the woman who's been my wife now for the last 20 years, Jane. We have a young son and life is here and it's, you know, I really enjoy living here. But what I decided when I came here is I was going to start a business that really, you know, just avoided the pressures that I'd kind of been running away from in London. I should probably take a breath here. Am I taking too long with this response or is this okay? No, no, this is perfect. I I, I okay. do want to hear your journey with this. So this is fantastic. All right. Okay. So look, I'll try, I'll, I'll try and keep it short. So what, when I, when I got to Sydney, you know, mm-hmm. uh, shortly, actually when I first came here, I actually worked with a big design group for a year because I thought, okay, first things first, let's, just get the lie of the land around here. So maybe getting a job for a year isn't a bad idea. So I did. So I worked with a big design company for 12 months. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was good and learnt my way around the city and all that sort of stuff. But by the end of that period, when I decided to leave, I had a good network then of creative people, freelance designers and artists and photographers and people that had kind of come into that business um, you know, whether as freelancers or, or employees or whatever. And so what I did when I quit that job is I started working as a kind of consultant to those businesses, to, to small creative businesses. So I was helping people in those businesses work out, you know, who their target market were, how to position themselves, how to recruit people in the business, how to brand themselves and market themselves. That was the work that I was doing. And it was really good fun. Mm-hmm. It was really good fun. But I still felt, I don't know, I wasn't really, it just wasn't kind of firing me completely. And then through delightful twist of face, I met a guy at a dinner party, um, a psychologist, you know, and as anyone would know, if you're going to a dinner party, do not sit next to the psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. Yeah, yeah. And it turned out he didn't burrow into my head. He, but he was the most delightful, is the most delightful man. He's become a very good friend. And, um, and I was talking to him about my work and he said, what do you enjoy the most? And I said, well, you know, the thing I really enjoy the most is kind of after the day of work with these small creative business owners, we kind of go to the bar or we go to a cafe. That's when I enjoy it because that's when they really start telling me about their life and why they're running this business and all of those kind of, I said, that's what I really enjoy is those sort of conversations. Mm-hmm. And he said to me, you know, you should have a look at this. This was in uh, 2000, 1999, 2000. He said, you should look at this new thing called coaching that has been growing in the US and it's just come to Australia. Mm-hmm. You should look at that because that sounds like the kind of thing you might like. So, I thought, oh, that sounds interesting. I'd never heard of it. You know, coaching was not in Australia in 2000. So I did some research and lo and behold, Coach University, a big uh, US company, was indeed um, running some training in Australia, the first ever training outside of the US a couple of weeks after that. So I joined up, did the course and cut a long story short, became qualified as a coach. I then helped the International Coach Federation. I was on the board of that. We set up the Australian arm of that. So I got very involved in coaching. Mm-hmm. Um, this was at a time when, you know, if you met someone and you said, I'm a coach, they were really interested to hear what's that. <laughs> you know, these days, if you say I'm a coach, people run for cover. Right. You know, it's, it's a bit of a different industry. But anyway, so I started working in a coaching capacity, and I really enjoyed that. I loved the uh, what, what I was able to accomplish with my clients. Okay. It was far, far more uh, effective than rolling up your sleeves and doing the job because what you're doing, obviously, if you're coaching properly and well, uh, is you're helping people realize where their perhaps their own failings are and to help them upskill and 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 take action. So that's what I did. And again, through a delightful twist of fate, ABC television, which is the Australian version of your ABC television, Mm -hmm. 
which is an Australian broadcasting company, uh, one of their big documentary shows was doing um, a program on new work styles. And they were looking, they, one of the things they were, they were looking at technology, they were looking at 